Hello and welcome to a quick overview of how to install and configure VMware's vCenter Chargeback Manager 2.5, an end-to-end -end cost reporting solution for virtual environments using VMware vSphere. Chargeback is actually very easy to install. A detailed installation guide is available on VMware.com if necessary, but we'll cover the installation in just four easy steps today. First, we'll simply review the hardware and software requirements, then make sure we've gathered all the information necessary for the installation, Next, we'll download and run the installer application. And finally, we'll launch a browser to connect to the vCenter Chargeback Manager server. To begin with, here are the hardware requirements for Chargeback Manager 2.5. A 2 GHz processor, 4 gigs or more of RAM, at least 2 GB of disk space, and it's recommended to have a gigabit Ethernet adapter. Please note that if the load balancer and data collector are installed on the same machine as vCenter Chargeback Manager server, then additional storage, memory, and processor capacity will be required. Now here's a list of the software requirements for Chargeback Manager 2.5. As you can see, there are a few configurations of Windows Server for the operating system, SQL Server or Oracle 11G, and you can either use Internet Explorer or Firefox with the Flash plugin for the web browser. You will need vCenter Server 5.x or vCenter Server and vCloud Director 1.5 or 5.1 as well. Now to begin our installation, please download the latest version of vCenter Chargeback Manager from vmware.com slash download slash chargeback. Chargeback is available as a free evaluation if you don't have a license key. Now after we've downloaded the installation package, let's extract the files from the zip and then click on the vCenter CB installation application. Next, we'll see the installation introduction page. We'll click Next to begin the installation itself. We'll review and accept the license agreement by clicking Next. Then we need to choose the location for our installation. We can use the default or specify a new location if needed and click Next. Next, we'll need to fill in the information for the Chargeback Manager database server. You may use either an Oracle or SQL database to store the data collected from vCenter. Please refer to the installation guide for the recommended configurations of your database, and please note that it is best to have that database created before you begin this installation. For our demonstration today, we will be using an Oracle 11G database server. We'll need to fill in the URL for the database, give it a name, and provide our username and password. Now, to make sure everything is working properly, it is a good idea to go ahead and test the connection by clicking the Test Connection button. Once we get a successful connection, let's proceed with the installation by clicking Next. Click through the Next dialog box to confirm that we want to use the database as configured. And now we're being asked to provide the information for the load balancer, which is always installed during the initial installation. We'll verify the IP address and the HTTPS port number, then we need to enter the administrator email address and click Next. We now have the option of installing the vCenter Chargeback Manager server instance along with the load balancer. Once again, let's verify the IP address, the HTTP port, the load balancer port. Then we choose a name for the Chargeback Manager server instance. Keep in mind that you may install multiple Chargeback Manager servers as your environment grows. Our next step is to install the data collectors for vCenter, vCloud Director, and vShield Manager. The vCenter data collector is required, but the vCloud Director and vShield Manager data collectors are optional and should only be installed if you're actually running vCloud Director or vShield Manager. In our example, we'll install all of the collectors. As prompted, specify the URL, hostname, IP address for your vCloud Director server, along with the administrator ID and password. This will allow the data collector to access the vCloud Director server. Let's click Next so we can specify the connection information for the vCloud Director database. We'll select the database type, the URL, and as before, we'll name the database and provide the proper username and password. And again, as we did before, test the connection to ensure everything has been filled in correctly and once we get a successful connection, we'll proceed by clicking Next. Here we will simply verify the Chargeback Manager Administrator ID and password and click Next. 
and we'll have a chance to review the installation options before we proceed and then simply click Install to carry out the installation. At the end of the installation, we'll see an important note regarding the configuration of the vCenter and vCloud Director servers within Chargeback Manager. You must explicitly add all the vCenter servers to Chargeback and ensure all the passwords for the vShield Manager servers are configured in Chargeback. This step is covered in more detail in the Chargeback Manager configuration video. And here is our confirmation screen that lets us know that the installation was a success. As we click Done, we'll see an option to have the installer generate the default SSL certificate or choose to generate one for ourselves. If you don't have your own SSL certificate, the default is recommended. And you can always add your own at a later date. Now that the installation is complete, we can open up a web browser and connect to the Chargeback Manager server by specifying the user interface URL or HTTP localhost 8080 CBMUI. And that completes our installation of Chargeback Manager 2.5. For more information on Chargeback or any of the VMware management products, please visit VMware.com. Thank you.